Hi there, and we're gonna do a little walkthrough on my new Bonafide SS127. I get a lot of questions about it. I put some videos out showing uh, running on the lake, a little bit of teaser stuff here lately, being out fishing on it. So I, I get a lot of questions about how I have it rigged up. So the first disclaimer I'll give you is I have a lot of stuff on here, but it's all things that I you know, really wanted to have to be able to use it the way I use it. So I wouldn't expect that everybody's just gonna jump in, say the first kayak and just throw all this stuff on here, right? You really need to make sure that you make it your own, um, which is what I've done here. So we're gonna start at the front. We're gonna work our way through to the back. And uh, obviously the very first thing that jumps out is the Motor Guide XI3 I have on the front here. So this is a uh, 55 pound uh, thrust motor. It has a 12 volt power and then it has the capability to do pinpoint, which is the uh, ability to hold you on a spot and keep you there. I mean, as the wind's blowing and that kind of stuff, it's gonna adjust the speed, the angle that it's turned, everything like that to keep you in a, in a location. And it also has the capability to do uh, a vector run. So let's say I'm fishing down a, uh, a bank and I just wanna run straight down that and not keep fooling around with the motor as the wind's blowing, I can just hit that button and the uh, motor will just hold me, and I'll just go straight in that, down that line, can keep on fishing. So the next question everybody gets is, hey, if your motor's way up here in the front, you sit back there, how do you control this thing? Right, do you, do you have a foot pedal or something like that? And, and the answer's no, right? So with the motor guides, it comes with this remote that you wear on a lanyard around your neck, so you have that with you. I can stand up and fish and be able to control my kayak. Um, as I'm moving, so that's really convenient. Um, you could add a pedal to this, but in this setup, there's not room for me to be able to do that. So next question I get is, how do you raise and lower this motor with it being all the way up in the front? So this is an idea that I, uh, I took from some research and came across Derek Brundle's video, who also runs a motor guide XI3, and it's just two ropes. So the first part is this rope here, which is the one that allows me to, to raise it and to drop the motor down in a slow controlled fashion. So that's just running all the way back to the cockpit and put some handles on that, make it a little bit easier to pull. The next part is when this is in the up position or the down position, this is the latch that releases it. So came up with a little clip here, had to drill the hole through the plastic and then run an eyelet down into the hull of the kayak. So when I run the rope all the way back to the cockpit and pull it, then it's gonna you know, pull that latch down, release it, and then I can pull the motor up and get it into the stowed position. So next, um, if we go down to the nose of the kayak, I put the Kitec keel card on there. So that's a thermal form plastic that's harder than the plastic that comes um, you know, with the hull of the, of the kayak. So it's um, harder, gonna be able to withstand those you know, rocks and, and ramps and that kind of stuff that I pull up to. The next thing is um, I wanted to put navigation lights on here, running the motor. So on each side, I've got the, the lights here, red and green lights that are controlled through my Yak power box. Um, then running all of this stuff off of a, a big battery. So my big motor, my lights, GoPros, and the power pole are all powered by a 100 amp hour Bieno power lithium battery so perfect fit into this front hall um, have it pulled out here just a little bit because uh, we have the yak power box tucked in up underneath here i'll cover in just a second but two connections so one is the power in that's going into the yak power box and the other is the connector that's going into the, the main uh main power which is powering uh this motor so the Yak Power Box is a, a switching mechanism that allows me wirelessly to turn on all of the circuits that are controlling everything on my, on my kayak. All right, so to control the Yak Power Box, I have a switch up here, which is Bluetooth connected to the box. So there's no wires, there's no drilling for this part of it. I have the ability to turn it on and off. I have uh, one and two circuits, so I can use that for uh, GoPro cameras and power pole, which are all hardwired in. Then I have a bow mount, which is doing my navigation lights on the front. I'll be putting um, 
lights in the cockpit area so if I'm fishing out at night I can be able to see that way and then I'll still have an extra circuit that I can use for something as uh, you know, as I want to add something to this. The other way that the Yak Power Box can be controlled is through an app on your phone which is Bluetooth connected in. So that's a pretty cool way to be able to turn on and off all your circuits. You don't have to leave your seat. Just you know you have your phone there anyway for taking pictures so you can just reach up there and turn that on. So the next idea that I got off of uh, social media was a way to store my yak attack leverage landing net so I like to have my net out in front of me it's what I'm accustomed to um, some people are having their net behind them and flipping it up and you know a bunch of things like that I just like it here it's it's right there in front of me I don't have to reach behind me just reach out there and grab it and um, you know this is all using yak attack uh, roto grips the uh, 90 degree connector four inch extension and then the uh, you know the standard mount here um, which will support this higher mount and then you can just have a regular roto grip in the back which is going to you know just hold that as you would traditionally hold the net so thought that was a really good way to keep that net up there i was kind of trying to figure that out and, and thanks to silla for putting that out there for everybody to see the next part is power for the motor that comes off this waterproof connector up in the kind of in the cockpit area so it's out of the way of everything kind of tucked in here and easy to connect and disconnect as I'm taking the motor on and off and pretty simple to do the next part we'll jump into is obviously the fish finder so you can't miss this thing this is the hummingbird 9 gen 3 mega so uh, it's a great um, great unit. I started running this one last year and has everything that I, I could want here. So I'll do another video about how I have the whole pod set up, but uh, for anybody that's not familiar, right, the pod is self-contained. I've got a, a 10 a, or 15 amp hour piano power lithium inside here. The wires are contained, transducer on the bottom, and it's just an easy drop in, latch, and you know snap the front down and it's ready to go. And that's how quick it is to take it off as well. And then um, for the reflections, I, I run a Burley Pro. Um, helps out a lot there just to, to keep sun off. And I really, really like that addition as well. Next, we'll jump into the back view camera. So this is a Hero 7 Black. I'm using the, uh, again, the Attack introduced new camera um, mounts this year. So this is the Panfish Pro, just the standard. I don't have an extension on this one or anything, just exactly how it would come if you purchase this from Yak Attack. Again, it has the quick release, um, just like all the rod holders and that kind of stuff. So really nice to be able to pull that on and off quick. The other thing is that I wanted to be able to have extended battery life. So I'm running a uh, Yak Power USB connector on the front here. So this is connected into that Yak Power box. This allows me to use the dongle that the Yak Power sells. Plugs right into the hull here, and then it's got this nice uh, weatherproof connector. So when I'm done with my fishing for the day, just cover that up and I'm not getting any water into that connector. So real clean setup there, and that's why I chose to go that route. The next thing that I did is I did add a rudder to this. So while that's in the back, while we're up here, I'm gonna talk about the, the steering um, option that you can get with the pedals that Bonafide sells. So uh, makes it easy if you wanted to put a trolling motor on the back of your kayak or uh, in my case, the rudder, anything that you wanna have hands-free control of, this allows you to control that with the pedals just sliding on these tracks here. And the, the pedals you know, have a quick release uh, switch here that allows you to lock it in place for if you're just paddling don't have anything and then in the in this case just free that up by flipping it open and then the pedal just slides back and forth all right stepping back into the cockpit area here so this is where all the all the good stuff happens right have the controls for raising and lowering the rudder here then we have the catch board fits perfect so this is the 26 inch catch board fits right underneath the seat and you know, can stow that out of the way till you catch your fish and then pull that out and then it's uh right a perfect fit for for coming across the kind of the you know, the foot area here take your pictures 
Now what I do is I'll set my net up on this side here. So that's kind of another, another video to go through how to take pictures and set that up without losing fish. But it's a perfect size. This 26 inch is for the Bonafide SS 127. Then this is an LE and it came with the, uh, and the 127 comes with it as well. But the junk box, so I've, I've got that here, it's easy to gain access to, slide it out. And if you've seen my other video, I talk about the Plano box where I keep all my terminal tackle. So that fits right in there. And then you have the cover that you put on there to hold things in if you wanted to keep the box in the uh, junk drawer in place as you are driving down the road. All right, next. All right, this is the, just the standard seats, really comfortable, has a high and low position. Personally, I keep it in the high position all the time. I haven't even been out in it in the low position. Then we have a rod holder. So kind of this is my kind of staging rod holder. So this is one where I wanted to have a, a place to put my rods when I catch my fish without having to turn back around, stick it in my black pack or anything like that. So this is very convenient for me to put this right here. Now, when you, you know, if you buy a Bonafide, it doesn't come with a track mount on the sides here. So if you look at that side there, I've got my cup holder in, in this side, but these are the mighty mounts. They come in different lengths. It's very easy to cut the, uh, you know, the padding that's on the side there. And you get a really clean finish putting those uh, mighty mounts in there. And they're just a screw in, so really simple to do. Then right behind the seat, this is where I keep my soft plastics. So I use a Plano wrap. Um, you know, Raptor Tackle's got theirs out now, which I think is a pretty similar type of design. So it's right there for me to gain access to while I'm on the water, have my scents and dyes in my Tupperware container back behind the seat. So it's, um, you know, it's a small package, but I got a lot of stuff going on here and, and everything that I need out on the water. So it's, you know, everything that's, that needs to be accessed quickly is right around the seat area and I can get to it, it very quickly. Uh, I don't have to use my paddle very often with the motor on it, so I just kind of store them off to the side. Um, you would have rod holders on the side, but the way I have it set up with the cup holder up here and then the rod holder on this side, it's, it's not very uh, not very friendly to be able to use the paddle holder as it was originally designed. So I may work on a different way to hold the paddle, but that's just how I'm storing it right now. Then you have the black pack in the back. So, um, you know, this is things that's just full of uh, 3,700 Plano boxes, got extra line. So it's again, right there, have my rod holders, looking at maybe setting up the, the rods in a little bit different uh, orientation to the seat. So a little bit of closeness between the, the back of the seat here and, and the rods here on the front. So that's something to consider when you're laying out uh, a black pack. Now I do have this scooted back. Now the, uh, the padding here kind of is indented to be able to, you know, with the recess here for that to, to slide right in. And I move it back a little bit um, for give me access to the, the power port for the rear camera mount. So again, I've done that same thing with that Yak Power box and have the, the Yak Power connector here with the USB connector. And then I'm using the Yak Attack boomstick with the Hero 8 uh, black on the back there. So that's gonna give those overhead views. Um, Notice I get pretty good sound. Um, obviously going to pick up some, some wind there. So, you know, if we do some more on the water instruction or videos and stuff like that, may look to another uh, mic or something like that. But it's working pretty well with this uh, forward-facing mic on the Hero 8. And then safety is obviously a number one concern while I'm out there. So we have the Yak Attack Busy Carbon. Um, have your 360 light, which is the mandatory light that we have to have when we're out there, whether you have a motor or you don't. And then uh, the flag just give you that little bit more safety and a reflective tape. And it's, I just kind of get it back here out of the way as I'm doing casting and, and that kind of stuff. Now, as I mentioned before, I, I added the rudder system here. So uh, this was a pretty easy install. Um, I wasn't quite sure how it was gonna be running lines all the way up through the hull, but, but it wasn't bad at all. And then the other addition that I have is the, power pole micro anchor so 
this is something that I had on my previous kayak and wanted to be able to incorporate the rudder. So I put the mount off to the side here. Now I did reinforce the, the mount um, with some additional plastic through the, the hall access here. But again, that wasn't very bad. Just took a piece of uh, uh, cutting board, cut that down, give a little bit more stability here because you know, I, I use this thing a lot, right? Wind's blowing hard, I'm gonna slam this thing down, make me stop and uh, really useful tool. The other thing that I did with this, running that 100 amp hour battery, is I hardwired this in rather than just using the standard uh, power pole battery. So this is the Yak Attack through haul uh, kit. So it comes with varying size um, adapters here. You can put another one here if I had something else that needed power in the back. But that was very, very quick. Just drill a one inch hole and then uh, size up the appropriate rubber grommets to go in the middle there and then screw it right in. So really quick and easy and uh, use those as well on the, uh, the dry pod. I'll cover that in a video that I do on how I set up my dry pod. So that's kind of the setup I have for the, the new modified SS127. A lot of things here and hope you guys got something that you can take away as a, an idea that you can use for yourself and make your day on the water much better.